Hello AP Calculus AP students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we're ready to start a new series of topics here in Unit 4, which is all about contextual representations of the derivative. And we're going to begin our pretty long journey into this idea of related rates. It's typically the first story problem type of concept that comes into an AP calculus class. Some students struggle a little bit with related rates. I'm going to try to walk you through this very slowly. We have several examples that we're going to look at and hopefully you'll start to feel a little bit better about them as time progresses. But I want to just use a bit of time in this very short video to introduce you to the idea of a related rate. And so what we've got here is a situation where we conceptualize how two different rates can coexist. So there's two different things that's happening and we look at them a bit separately and we can kind of think about how they influence each other. So for our first example, which is just a series of four different uh, vessels with four different graphs, we're going to say that water is going to be poured in to these vessels at a very steady rate. And the shapes of these vessels or, or, or containers are very unusual. I want us to sketch the graph of the height of the water versus the time that it takes to fill. And so the two rates that we have are the volume that's accumulating in, in the container as water is being poured, and then the height that's changing as that volume changes. So that's kind of what you're looking at here. Now you'll notice that I don't have any of the scales uh, on the x nor y axis because it's not important. I don't want this to be a perfect rendition. I just want the shape to depict what's happening. So let's see if this makes some sense. If you look at this first example, it's just a nice what we call rectangular prism type of container. And as water is poured in at a steady rate, we notice that the height is very likely going to grow very steadily as well. In fact, this height will grow as a single linear type of, of depiction. And so at time zero, when there's no height, we could start very likely right about here. And then your sketch would just have to have some kind of a positive slope. It really doesn't matter what that slope is per se, but it's just going to be positive and linear. And so it could look like that. Now we'll do the second one together in the upper right corner, and then I want to see if you guys can try to, to, to figure out what these other couple might look like. Now the same kind of situation is happening. We're filling this inverted T with water very steadily. And we notice that as that happens, oh, it's very likely that the height is going to change. But is that height changing, say, as fast as it would have been, say, in that first container? And the answer is no, it wouldn't. Which means that we're going to have a slightly decreased slope. In other words, we won't have as steep of a line, but it's still going to be a line nonetheless. Now, as soon as we reach the water level right about here, let's say, then things begin to change. As that water is still poured in steadily, we're going to find that our height is increasing a little bit faster because we don't have as much width to contend with. And so that would be depicted by still a linear graph, but one that's going to be a bit steeper. And so this graphical depiction would consist of two line segments. I'd love for you to pause the video and, and if you've got the notes packet, go ahead and sketch what you think the lower left hand graph would look like. Or if you don't have the video packet and you're just thinking at home, just kind of think in your head what it would look like. And then Resume the video and see if you're correct. All right, let's take a look at this eye shape. Now, very similar to the inverted T, we're going to start at height zero, and we're not going to be growing as fast to begin with. 
But as soon as we get to the middle piece of this block I, we find that we're going to be increasing a little bit faster. Now, I don't know exactly how fast in comparison, but as long as we have a general shape, I'm, I'm happy about that. And then when we reach the top of that middle section, we now have to fill up a much wider section, and we end up not having the height change as quickly. Now, if we assume that these two parts are the same size, the same dimensions, then it's very likely that these two portions of our lined graph are probably parallel. And I'm going to go ahead and make that assumption here. And so that's what we would look like. Try the bottom right corner, and we'll finish up. All right, so for your bottom right corner, I don't know if you were thinking about because we have cylindrical pieces of our container, is that going to change anything? And it turns out it doesn't change it one bit. We are still looking at straight line segments to make this happen. And if we start down here at the bottom, hopefully you realize that you're going to have a little bit steeper slope to begin. And then after such and such time, we find that our slope will veer off a little bit and not be as steep because we're filling a much wider section with our water at that point. So this kind of sort of gets, I was going to say, gets your feet wet, no pun intended there, with related rates just a little bit. And you know we're going to still ease into it more and more. I have a second video that's going to talk a little bit more about the numerical type of reasoning with related rates and then we'll have a series of videos that's going to solve various time types of related rate story problems. So hope this helps and I certainly want to see you at the next video.